In this demonstration, Tony is working with a pen of new cattle that have been on feed for four days. Coming through the sale yard system, they may have a few bumps and bruises, so it's important to get them moving around, drinking, eating and settling into a new routine. Pretty much what we're trying to do with pens like this is adapt them to their new surroundings very quickly uh, and uh, try to facilitate that process as, as soon as possible. I mentioned that the, the, a lot of these cattle have been through the sale yard system and a lot of them are, some of them are from other sources, some of them from paddocks, some of them from different sale yards. And so cattle being social animals, they're going to have to form a new social unit in this pen uh, and the, the sooner they do that, the better that they start working as a unit and uh, start performing as a unit as well. But with these cattle, pretty much what we want to do is, is sort of uh, tap into their, their own sort of innate um, behaviour. Cattle are prey animals. Uh, what they are are certainly very attentive. The, the defence that they've got is watchfulness, uh, strength in numbers, they operate as a herd, um, and an evasion from uh, potential threats and predators. Uh, at the moment, that's, that's the very thing that we are. We are a potential threat on the horizon to them. And uh, what we want to do is approach this herd and uh, try to get these cattle working off us as a handler, get sort of uh, dispel the threat that's, that's in us, have them sort of feel comfortable about us being around. And uh, what we want to do is turn uh, the reactionary responses they might have to me walking this pen and, and working with them into responses. And eventually what we want to be able to get uh, these cattle working, uh, working off me and responding to me rather than reacting to me. And one of the best ways to approach a pen of cattle like this that are very new is in a zigzag uh, sort of formation. Cattle don't have a very good depth of perception so they won't like it if I just go straight at them. But if I just sort of wobble on them sort of in a zigzag fashion, they'll, they'll move off me with, uh, they'll be attentive but they won't be reactionary and uh, we'll get them into a mob and then we'll start working with them, working with the lead and I'll explain that as I go. Pretty much these cattle already sort of uh, sussed me out. You can see it doesn't take long to get some movement in uh, cattle that are, that are already sort of uh, responding to my moving on their horizon. But instead of being threatening to that, that steer, I'll just go in a different direction and I'll close the gap slowly by doing, working in a zigzag pattern. This little baldy steer is, can, lets me get fairly close before he, before he wants to respond. And he's, he's, he's pretty comfortable in my presence. And when you consider flight zones in these cattle, these cattle are sort of not that flighty. Uh, you can get in pretty close before you get a response out of them. And so as far as acclimatizing these guys to the feed yard, or certainly to me, and then to the feed yard, get a little bit more reactionary response there, which I don't want to pressure too much. I don't want to make too much out of that. If uh, the cattle move away fairly quickly and move away in a reaction, I need to sort of just take the pressure off and start again. But um, by and large, a lot of these cattle are fairly, fairly soft. They're, they're, they don't have very big flight zones and um, we're going to be able to work with these guys fairly quickly. They're starting to mob up. That's one of their um, defence mechanisms that we mentioned earlier. These, the strength in numbers with these guys. So they're going to mob up and just sort of assess the potential threat that is me operating in their new home and uh, respond accordingly, especially if I start to do some threatening things to these guys, the response that we'll probably get will be no response at all, it'll be a reaction and it'll be to take flight and um, head to the other end of the pen. But we, we want to have a bit more control than that. And we want these guys to sort of be comfortable with my presence and to move, move off me and sort of uh, wait for my sort of signal. And, um, and then we're going to have a mob of cattle that we can sort of control around the feed yard. Pretty much whenever you get a lead movement, which is what we have now, the other thing that cattle like to do is, uh, is follow each other, especially if there's a lead movement. And these little guys here have decided that they want to get out of this corner where we had them. And um, I'm just going to go along with that lead movement. And I'm just going to try to steer it around. One thing that the, the little creamy guy there is concerned about is our camera operating up to my right and me as well. He's just a little unsure and he's just wanting to sort of come back to the mob which was his last known sort of safe haven. These guys here are a lot less flighty. These guys actually need a little push. We've got a good lead movement going there and those guys are going to head to that corner of the pen. And what we know is that when they get to that corner they're probably going to stop and I want to be associated with that. It's a little bit of sort of reverse psychology. I want them to think that, that I had something to do with that with that stop there, a slowing of their 
feet, a sort of a controlling of that lead movement. And uh, these other little guys down the back of the pen can come and catch up. But what we want to do is just try to control that lead movement so that uh, just like any anything with cattle, once you sort of got the lead under control, the rest will follow. And these guys here, you'll see that they actually need a little bit more encouragement. These guys have got quite a small flight zone. They actually need a push. And we, and we want these guys to actually uh, respond to pushes every now and again, be happy with that. And uh, once I get a response, then I leave it alone. Pretty much the, uh, the concept here is control, pressure and release. If we get these cattle to work for us, that's the, the language that they understand. They understand the release of pressure is a desirable thing. And uh, just like training a young horse to be halter broke or to or to load up onto a truck, you don't get it done in the very first instance or on the very first day. They're all about little steps. If the, if the aim here was to have these cattle learn about the four corners of their pen, and learn about their new home, and that's the other process of, of acclimation, is to have these guys adapt to their new environment. Uh, they, were in, they were in a paddock only less than a week ago, and we want them to think of this as their home now. Um, sometimes what's the issue is in a new pen is that they don't like a corner or they don't, they're not so sure about a couple of corners of the pen. They're not so sure about the feed, the feed bunk. Well, they're not so sure about the very gate that you want them to come in and out of. And the aim might be to sort of show these guys that that corner or that gate is actually a good place to be. That's where we would relieve all pressure. If we can steer the lead around, we can steer them towards those little points of resistance and um, take the pressure off when they're there to show them that this is a good place to be. What's the good of acclimation? Well, as I mentioned before, respiratory disease is probably something that we'll be certainly looking for in these cattle over the next week and, and beyond for right up until their 50 and 60 days on feed. Stress as a, uh, stress as a factor in, in their adaptation to the feedlot, if, they've, if, if cattle have suffer nutritional, psychological or physical stress or all of the above, it does dampen their immune system. What we want these guys is to sort of adapt to this feedlot as quickly as possible, not, not have, um, sort of get over some of the stresses that they may have um, been subjected to in the, um, in the sort of the sale system, form their social groups fairly quickly in the feedlot, start operating as a unit so that we can also uh, work with them in, in the feedlot during daily, typical daily operations. Cattle have got to come in pens and out of pens, they've got to go down laneways, they've got to go onto trucks, they've got to change pens. We want to be able to steer these cattle around any point in the feedlot so that we can do that in an orderly sort of controlled manner and at the same time facilitate their adaptation to the feed yard so that they're not, their immune systems are as good as they can be and they're more, more resistant to disease. The other thing about acclimation is, in a, in a process like this, what new pen riders learn is the behaviour of cattle. They learn about flight distances, they learn about sort of controlling the lead, they learn about what cattle are going to do before they're going to do it, and it helps them sharpen their skills as a pen rider. And I think it's, a, it's an invaluable tool for that. Um, you might have shy feeders or shy drinkers in a pen of new cattle, and it's amazing how working the pen can sometimes bring out those little shy feeders to the bunk or to the trough and um, one of the other stresses that they, they don't need in their first week on feed is a, um, is a low feed intake or, or, to, or a low water intake. You can see some other cattle up towards the front there have actually got their heads in the bunk now as well and um, certainly I think it's is stimulatory to work with pens like this and uh, not only reduce their flight zones, not only get a bit of a surveillance of over the whole lot of them in terms of uh, who's lame, who's tucked up, who's possibly sick already, who's normal, but we also stimulate some feed intakes, some, some water intake, and these guys are learning how to be steered around the pen as well.